When you walk into our house, one of the first things you see is a wall with crosses on it, like many houses do that these days. These crosses have been given to us over the years, and they're one of the first things that I put up when we moved into our house eight years ago. One is a wooden cross with a picture, a beautiful picture of Jesus with outstretched arms, welcoming everybody into his loving embrace. There's another one that has pictures of creation with animals and such, and many others from very plain to very elaborate. My favorite is a concrete cross. In the middle of it are nails up and down in the shape of a cross. This particular cross has great gravitas and evokes a feeling, a powerful feeling of suffering and a very different kind of love than the outstretched arms of Jesus. It's a love that says, I will lay down my life for you and undergo great suffering for you and for your salvation. Now, I pass by these crosses every day, and so I have to be careful not to overlook what stands before me every day. That is the cross. I never really considered which cross I would take with me if I could only take one. Which cross would I pick up and carry with me? Now, if I'm honest, I have to say that I do not like today's readings. What does it mean to really deny oneself? What does it mean to pick up your cross and to follow Jesus? I've often struggled with the exact meaning of these words and what it means for me in my life. I've consulted numerous theologians and commentators over the years as I've struggled with this passage. This year, I decided to ask one very notable theologian in particular who calls herself the accidental theologian. That would be my wife, Beth. I asked her what she thought all this meant, and without hesitation, she said, well, I think it means that we intentionally walk towards suffering. Isn't that wonderful? I loved that idea from the accidental theologian. Think about it for a minute, to walk intentionally towards suffering. That explanation resonated with me because that is exactly what Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior did. So I guess it would make sense to walk intentionally towards suffering if we truly want to follow Jesus. That, of course, is not an easy thing to do. There is so much suffering in the world. Why would anybody walk intentionally towards it? Well, Jesus certainly did. And in doing so, he helped to alleviate much of the suffering in this world. When I think of suffering, I also think of what Paul says later on in Romans from our reading today. Paul puts it this way, suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. I've always liked the way that sounded, and it makes a lot of sense, but those steps, of course, are not easy. We don't just step from suffering automatically into the love of God. However, if we look backwards and examine the times when we have walked intentionally towards suffering, ours or someone else's, there's a feeling of character, integrity, something good that comes out of that and develops within us. Now, that's not to say that suffering in and of itself is good or that God actually desires our suffering or enjoys it somehow. However, suffering does point us to the hope of God that is in us as we understand it. The love of God, which will help us to endure any suffering which comes our way. And Paul, of course, is speaking about suffering which comes from truly following Jesus and following the gospel, not merely the kind of suffering that life will bring our way. Plenty of suffering comes to us, but suffering for the sake of the gospel and for others is suffering that we intentionally walk towards. We are sometimes under the false expectation that following Jesus will remove all suffering from our lives. But it clearly does not work that way. Jesus is clear that suffering will come just as it came to him and it came to his disciples and it comes to all who follow him, truly. And if we are called to walk towards suffering, if indeed we embrace our call to follow, we will. If we intentionally pick up our cross, we will experience suffering just by that very act. But if we truly seek to follow, we will also 
experience suffering for our faith. Now, that may come in the manner of walking towards others and the suffering that they have. We often think of Mother Teresa, who intentionally walked towards suffering and walked with those who suffered greatly. It's the highest form of love and the highest form of faith to join others in their suffering. Recently, I witnessed that firsthand when I was working at Volunteer Ministry Center. The staff there go out into the streets and into the encampments, and they walk towards the suffering of others, people who do not have food, adequate housing, safety, a warm place to lay their head. They enter into them with their suffering. Now, that's one reason why there's such burnout in this field of work. It's not an easy thing to do to truly join with someone in their suffering. And when I think of walking towards suffering, I often think of nurses, nurses who are willing to enter into the suffering of others in order to help alleviate that suffering. Now, of course, there are many professions which walk intentionally towards suffering, and there are many ways to do so, maybe by being part of the Stevens ministry or helping with fish or maybe family promise or any of the other ways that we can intentionally walk towards and with others in their suffering. We deny ourselves and we pick up our cross and we follow wherever Jesus leads us. Also think about an older gentleman that I knew in Texas at a church where we were. His wife unfortunately developed Alzheimer's and so she had to go live in assisted living in a memory care. This gentleman went to see her every day to share her meals with her, even though she never knew who he was. That is a sacred commitment to step into someone's suffering, and it's not an easy thing to do under such circumstances. And to watch as some sit with loved ones in the throes of death from the ravages of age or cancer or other illness, to walk intentionally with them in that suffering. Sometimes our walk towards suffering may be as simple as holding our tongue and not lashing out at others in anger or hurt. It may be rejecting the temptation to judge others harshly, even when it might be reasonable. It might be rejecting the temptation not to forgive, even when the other person does not seek our forgiveness nor deserve it, we forgive them anyway, because that is the way of Jesus. I mentioned earlier that I do not like this passage. That's because it calls us to a very high standard in our lives. And although we profess the desire to follow Jesus every day and every time we gather, it is a challenge not only to reach out and walk towards and with others in their suffering, but also to remember that in our own suffering, it can lead us to a deeper and much more powerful relationship with God. Because sometimes, That is the only place to go to find peace in the midst of suffering. The most difficult time in my life called me to suffer. But in that suffering, I found God and the strength to move through that suffering and into the hope of God's love. There's an enormous amount of suffering in this world. We can never alleviate it, nor will it ever dissipate. That is the nature of our existence and the unfortunate reality of our lives. At times, that can seem overwhelming, and it may make any effort seem futile. But the other reality is that any time we act to alleviate suffering, even in the smallest gesture, it is enormously gratifying to God and a testament to our faith and to God's love in the world. Don't be led to believe that kindness, no matter how small, is not a reason for rejoicing in heaven. Suffering will bring endurance which will bring about the character of Jesus within us in our actions, and that does help to spread the love of God throughout the world. Our actions do not merely bring moments of relief, but also moments of great hope and evidence of God's love through those actions. Now, as I consider the crosses that hang on our wall at our home, I don't really think that I have a favorite. They all represent the love of God in one way or another maybe through the wonderful creation all around us or the great love that Christ showed us in his death and resurrection or in the loving embrace that awaits us in the midst of our suffering. At a church where I was in Texas, 
we had a beautiful plain wooden cross that hung over the altar. It represents the risen Lord, the hope of the resurrection and all of its glory. But we also put a crucifix that is depicting the agony of Jesus hanging on the cross at the back of our church with a kneeler beneath it. The idea being that we live our lives in between those two crosses and also that Jesus knows our suffering like no one else. This Lent, as we seek to observe a Holy Lent, consider what it might mean to really pick up our cross, to deny ourselves, pick up that cross and follow our Lord and Savior more closely and to consider how we might walk intentionally towards the suffering of others. Thanks be to God. Amen.